It's not about um, any of the organizers. This is about the university and their unwillingness to really ensure that conservatives also have a platform and a place to express themselves at UC Berkeley. It's a shame that violent anarchists and other groups that are allowed on campus freely are able to make threats against our event and force us to cancel because of the, it, out of concern for the safety of everyone involved. The Berkeley College Republican Club suing the university for canceling conservative Ann Coulter's speech on campus. And now the ACLU, the American Civil Liberties Union, has come out in support of Ann Coulter's right to speak on a public university campus. Ann Coulter says even the left is supporting her right to free speech. I think what's going on with Berkeley, when you have, uh, it shows how radical the universities are generally. I mean, what you're talking about, I agree with, yes, they want to destroy and, cr and squelch conservative speech. But there is a separate issue with the universities right now. When you have Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, Howard, um, um, Bill Maher, Joy Behar, and so on and so forth, when they're all saying, oh, get over yourselves, Berkeley, we have a First Amendment. People have fought and died for the right to free speech. Joining me now is the Berkeley Republican Club's attorney, Harney Dillon. Good to see you. Have the protesters won? No, we're not going to let them win. We're going to court to stop them with uh, a lawsuit that is not about Ann Coulter's event, but it's about a series of events where the Berkeley College Republicans have been barred from bringing their preferred conservative speakers on the campus to Berkeley where they're needed more than anywhere else in the country. So very serious issue and we're here to change that policy. You know, I like your thoughts on this. Uh, Fox News' Tucker Carlson took, take, uh, took on a college professor who says he thinks we should have, quote, standards for speakers. Let's take a listen. I like your thoughts. The issue is that conservative groups on campus have intelligently discerned a strategy whereby they invite speakers who are deliberately provocative, often oh. not interested in actually debating ideas and fulfilling an educational mission in their visits to an institution. <laughs> so, so really, you're blaming the victim here because people are, quote, deliberately provocative. Can you hear yourself? I mean, he says he's a free speech advocate, but he thinks we should have standards and guardrails about what people say on campus. Yeah, I mean, that's ridiculous, obviously, as Tucker took the professor down. It's demagoguery, and he's a censor. That, let's call it what it is. The free speech standards at Berkeley are that uh, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad of Iran was able to go speak there without incident, that yet they're afraid of Ann Coulter. And just last week, the former president of Mexico, Vicente Fox, former head of state, was allowed to speak there. They have Supreme Court justices speak there. Uh, they have many important people speak there. This is clear censorship, and it does not stand under the First Amendment. You know, isn't there a problem when you have comedians like Jerry Seinfeld, Chris Rock, uh, Larry the Cable Guy saying, you know what, we don't want to perform on college campuses. They're too politically correct. They feel like they can't God. be comfortable there. And, you know, what, what we want to know is what have you been told from Berkeley authorities? Because pro Trump rally organizer Rich Black, he was on our show and he said politicians are behind this push to stop free speech. What do you think? Well, in the case of Berkeley, as our complaint details, there was coordination between the city of Berkeley and its mayor, who's very, very liberal, and the Berkeley chancellor's office and others in the university. And as we know, California very liberal, and a lot of Democrat politicians have served on the, um, on the regents there. There was coordination about this policy. There's a special policy made for speakers who are quote unquote controversial and guess what on the Berkeley campus that's 100 percent conservative speakers and to that extent yes but on the other hand I will say I'm very encouraged as a constitutional lawyer that virtually the entire spectrum of lawyers in the country particularly those who believe in the constitution and who practice that law uh, are saying that Berkeley is wrong and no amount of defense no amount of waving around their concerns for the snowflake security rights uh, is going to overcome the First Amendment, one of the fundamental norms of our de democracy in America. Where does your lawsuit go from here? Well, we just filed it on Monday. We just got a summons yesterday. We're serving the various individuals who were served at the university. And we then we're going to engage in a process of discovery. We're going to find out all the details of how they came up with this policy, all the considerations, who was consulted. And then we're going to seek relief from the court to order Berkeley to stop discriminating against 
people who want to speak on their campus or students who want to invite speakers on the basis of their viewpoint. And the principle we're trying to vindicate, to be clear, is not about conservative or liberal. It's about a marketplace of ideas at a university, and the principle equally applies to liberal students on other campuses as okay. well. All right. Thank you, Harmeet Dillon. Really appreciate you coming on. My pleasure. Next up, after an Obama administration.